Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandro from AlphaNurseGuy.com. This is NCLEX RN Review Lesson 1. In this video, we're going to be doing endocrine medication questions. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to get any updates. All links are in the description. Without the way, let's get started. Question 1. The nurse is teaching a client how to mix regular insulin and NPH insulin in the same syringe. Which action, if performed by the client, indicates the need for further teaching? A. Withdraws the NPH insulin first. B. Withdraws the regular insulin first. C. Injects air into NPH insulin vial first. D. Injects an amount of air equal to the desired dose of insulin into each vial. The correct answer is A. Withdraws the NPH insulin first. Rationale, when preparing a mixture of short-acting insulin, such as regular insulin, with another insulin preparation, the short-acting insulin is drawn into the syringe first. This sequence will avoid contaminating the vial of short-acting insulin with insulin of another type. Options B, C, and D identify correct actions for preparing NPH and short-acting insulin. Question 2. The home care nurse visits a client who recently got diagnosed with diabetes mellitus who is taking humulin NPH insulin daily. The client asks the nurse how to store the unopened vials of insulin. The nurse should tell the client to take which action. A. Freeze the insulin. B. Refrigerate the insulin. C. Store the insulin in a dark, dry place. D. Keep the insulin at room temperature. The correct answer is B. Refrigerate the insulin. Rationale, insulin in unopened vials should be stored under refrigeration until needed. Vials should not be frozen. When stored unopened under refrigeration, insulin can be used up to the expiration date on the vial. Question 3. Glymperide is prescribed for a client with diabetes mellitus. The nurse instructs the client that which food items are most acceptable to consume while taking this medication. Select all that apply. A. Alcohol. B. Red meats. C. Whole grain cereals. D. Low calorie desserts. The correct answers are B. Red meats and C. Whole grain cereals. Rationale When alcohol is combined with glymperide, a disulfiram like reaction may occur. This syndrome includes flushing, palpitations, and nausea. Alcohol can also potentiate the hypoglycemic effects of the medication. Clients need to be instructed to avoid alcohol consumption while taking this medication. Low calorie desserts should also be avoided. Even though the calorie content may be low, carbohydrate content is most likely high and can affect the blood glucose. Question 4. The nurse is providing discharge teaching for a client, newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes mellitus, who has been prescribed metformin. Which client statement indicates the need for further teaching? A. It is okay if I skip meals now and then. B. I need to constantly watch for signs of low blood sugar. C. I need to let my health care provider know if I get unusually tired. D. I will be sure to not drink alcohol while on this medication. The correct answer is B. I need to constantly watch for signs of low blood sugar. Rationale Metformin is classified as a biguanide and is the most commonly used medication for type 2 diabetes mellitus initially. It is also often used as a preventive medication for those at high risk for developing diabetes mellitus. When used alone, metformin lowers the blood sugar after meal intake as well as fasting blood glucose levels. Metformin does not stimulate insulin release and therefore poses little risk for hypoglycemia. For this reason, metformin is well suited for clients who skip meals. Unusual somnolence, as well as hyperventilation, myalgia, and malaise are early signs of lactic acidosis, a toxic effect associated with metformin. If any of these signs or symptoms occur, the client should inform the health care provider immediately. 
Question 5. The healthcare provider prescribes exonatide for a client with type 1 diabetes mellitus who takes insulin. The nurse should plan to take which most appropriate intervention. A. Withhold the medication and call the HCP, questioning the prescription for the client. B. Administer the medication within 60 minutes before the morning and evening meal. C. Monitor the client for gastrointestinal side effects after administering the medication. D. Withdraw the insulin from the pre-filled pen into an insulin syringe to prepare for administration. The correct answer is A. Withhold the medication and call the HCP, questioning the prescription for the client. Rationale, exonatide is an incretin mimetic used for type 2 diabetes mellitus only. It is not recommended for clients taking insulin. Hence, the nurse should withhold the medication and question the HCP regarding this prescription. Although options B and C are correct statements about the medication, in this situation the medication should not be administered. The medication is packaged in pre-filled pens, ready for injection, without the need for drawing it up into another syringe. Question 6. A client is taking Humulin NPH insulin and regular insulin every morning. The nurse should provide which instructions to the client. Select all that apply. A. Hypoglycemia may be experienced before dinner time. B. The insulin dose should be decreased if illness occurs. C. The insulin should be administered at room temperature. D. Withdraw the insulin from the pre-filled pen into an insulin syringe to prepare for administration. F. The insulin vial needs to be shaken vigorously to break up the precipitates. E. The NPH insulin should be drawn into the syringe first, then the regular insulin. The correct answers are A. Hypoglycemia may be experienced before dinner time, and C. The insulin should be administered at room temperature. Rationale Humulin NPH is an intermediate acting insulin. The onset of action is 60 to 120 minutes, it peaks in 6 to 14 hours, and its duration of action is 16 to 24 hours. Regular insulin is a short acting insulin. Depending on the type, the onset of action is 30 to 60 minutes, it peaks in 1 to 5 hours, and its duration is 6 to 10 hours. Hypoglycemic reactions most likely occur during peak time. Insulin should be at room temperature when administered. Clients may need their insulin dosages increased during times of illness. Insulin vials should never be shaken vigorously. Regular insulin is always drawn up before NPH. Question 7. The home health care nurse is visiting a client who was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes mellitus. The client is prescribed repaglinide and metformin. The nurse should provide which instructions to the client. Select all that apply. A. Diarrhea may occur secondary to the metformin. B. The repaglinide is not taken if a meal is skipped. C. The repaglinide is taken 30 minutes before eating. D. A simple sugar food item is carried and used to treat mild hypoglycemia episodes. F. Muscle pain is an expected effect of metformin and may be treated with acetaminophen. E. Metformin increases hepatic glucose production to prevent hypoglycemia associated with repaglinide. The correct answers are a. Diarrhea may occur secondary to the metformin, b. The repaglinide is not taken, if a meal is skipped, c. The repaglinide is taken 30 minutes before eating, and d. A simple sugar food item is carried and used to treat mild hypoglycemia episodes. Rationale, repaglinide, a rapid-acting oral hypoglycemic agent that stimulates pancreatic insulin secretion, should be taken before meals and should be withheld if the client does not eat. Hypoglycemia is a side effect of repaglinide, and the client should always be prepared by carrying a simple sugar at all times. Metformin is an oral hypoglycemic given in combination with repaglinide and works by decreasing hepatic glucose production. A common side effect of metformin is diarrhea. Muscle pain may occur as an adverse effect from metformin, but it might signify a more serious condition that warrants healthcare provider notification not the use of acetaminophen. 
Question 8. The nurse is teaching the client about his prescribed prednisone. Which statement, if made by the client, indicates that further teaching is necessary? A. I can take aspirin, or my antihistamine, if I need it. B. I need to take the medication every day, at the same time. C. I need to avoid coffee, tea, cola, and chocolate in my diet. D. If I gain more than 5 pounds a week, I will call my health care provider. The correct answer is, A, I can take aspirin, or my antihistamine, if I need it. Rationale, aspirin, and other over-the-counter medications, should not be taken, unless the client consults with the HCP. The client needs to take the medication, at the same time every day, and should be instructed not to stop the medication. A slight weight gain, as a result of an improved appetite is expected, however, after the dosage is stabilized, a weight gain of 5 pounds, or more weekly, should be reported to the HCP. Caffeine-containing foods and fluids need to be avoided because they may contribute to steroid ulcer development. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.